Any uh, questions? Like location, time, people. Uh, please use pen if you can avoid pencil. Uh, I mean, you can use pencil. Uh, right, that's the thing. But then, uh, if you do the erasing, make sure you have a really good eraser. Because if it's foggy, then the scanner won't catch it. Yeah, um, so why, like, a, what's a very good eraser? Fabul Castle? Why, uh, like, like a high end, uh, high end eraser? Yeah, relax, do the first easy questions. So, right, true, false, will not be doable except one. Uh, the other ones are like, I don't know, people give me the final, I don't know, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, what else? Yeah, true, false, example question. Uh, what else? Yeah, you saw the problem, definitely. But um, do the easy ones first. Let the computation for the end. And, uh, don't like, so that at least you get more than 50. Is that hard? Oh, no, it's not hard. It's just it's stressful. Like, I mean, I can imagine some of the computations, like the, the Graham Smith, might be very stressful. Wait, yeah, no, it's really hard. No, no, it's small. It's just you have to like uh, write things. I mean, there's a okay. You'll see. But if you can make it quicker, do it quicker. Like there are ways to. There are tricks. But uh, I think I found one trick, but there was another trick. But for me, it was a pain. Uh, but apparently, there are tricks. So take your time. Find the tricks. If you can, if not, compute. So, yeah, one theorem that you will need to know definitely for the final is one of my questions at the end. Uh, make sure you know this formula. Make sure you know the formula with projections, okay? So, uh, we proved that if t is diagonal, then you can write lambda 1 pe1, uh, lambda n pen. Right? Yeah, and you can go both ways. So you can you can uh, you can write this guy in terms of this. But if you, we give you this, you can reconstruct this. So do that as an exercise so that you pass the time. No, whatever. It's just a small question that uh, uh, tests whether you understand this one. Okay, just play with it, all right? I said enough. Uh, huh? Makes sense to do what? You said it doesn't make sense? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah, because you, once you have the direct sum, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no, exactly that. Like you want to find the basis, uh, you have a formula for the projection in terms of the basis. So instead of having one log sum, you split your sum into little parts. Yeah, 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 yeah. But 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 you pick an orthonormal for each guy. Yeah, and then uh, it just shows up here as a sum, 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 sum. Oh, uh, Sakura says, are we going to have this week's content on the exam? No, no, we finished on uh, last week, yeah. Um, so remember when I did this review on the spectrophere? Make sure you know everything up to that slide, which I called review. Okay. Huh? Yeah, yeah, make sure you know the statement and all the counterexamples, okay? Go through all the 
I didn't count your examples in class. I said, if you have this, one, one, this. Right. Yeah, I go for various assumptions, like you have direct equalizable, but not self adjoint. There are maps like that. You have normal, but not self adjoint. Yeah, yeah, and country examples where the theorem is not true. So, uh, we said normal, if and only if uh, there exists an orthonormal basis where you have diagonalizable. But you can still have diagonalizable but without an orthonormal basis. Yeah, but you have to know the example. Yeah, so do all those stuff. Okay. Um, actually, this might be the example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Time changed. Uh, okay, all right. Let's compare. Uh, we're not, there are other people here. So, uh, this decomposition we have for general operators. So again, we proved the spectral theorem, uh, okay? And, uh, but it's not necessarily true, right? Because this guy here, if you find its eigenvector, um, I don't remember now, it was like zero one. But, uh, so it only has one eigenvector, okay? So it does not span, uh, does not span uh, uh, V equal R2. Because it's only one and there's two of them. Okay, so you cannot split R2 into E and E because there's only one of them. So you will just have a strict subset uh, of the eigenvalue for M. Okay, so strict subset. So you don't always have this decomposition, but you have something general, general uh, called generalized eigenvectors. So uh, this will be very heavily tested. So let's go very slow. As we pick the final, so I know what the final is. So, uh, yeah, let's go slow. Uh, this is a linear map. And for a linear map, uh, we know what eigenvectors are. Um, but we also have a generalized notion uh, where you take a power. So, uh, if you take j equal one, then you have t minus lambda i, v equal to zero. So you have t equal uh, lambda v, right? That eigenvector. But um, we'll do examples, but uh, there are v, and it turns out that for every v, there is such a j for your linear map uh, that uh, you have this uh, being zero. And we define this space so so k lambda t are all the v so that this is true okay you understand you fix your lambda uh -huh. you fix your lambda and then this is the generalized eigenspace. space so um, so let me ask you this the uh, the, the usual one, e lambda t. Uh, how does it go? Does it go this way or this way? Why, why would you say that? You said the superset, what? Yeah, yeah, it's this one, but what was the justification? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's all. Right, right, right. Because it doesn't say for all J, it says for some J. If it was for all J, it would be the thing you said. Uh, if you, but it's for some J. So this guy is basically the union of, uh, let me abuse notation, okay? Like, uh, you know, K lambda T1 
union K lambda T2 all the way, and the first guy is E lambda T, okay? Do you understand? Like the, this K lambda 2T contains all the guys uh, that if you put two, uh, it's zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just splitting the, the, the definition so that we see that one of the sets is just the, the usual argument space. Okay. okay, different one? Yeah, yeah, we will prove that uh, that there's like a minimum. Yeah. Any questions? Oh. The first phase. Ah, man. So, well, I'm sorry, I'm start. You guys can use the mic, but I will, uh, I will, I will, I will start to Okay. Um, and we will prove this amazing result. So, that uh, you can split your uh, vector space in terms of the generalized. So, you, just, you can just look this versus this. Okay. Okay. So it's the same thing. This is for diagonalizable. Uh, this will be for every linear map. Okay. All right. Perfect. Yeah, let's play with it. Let's understand what's going on. Uh, it's a nail point that you've seen from the homework. So we look at this map where you restrict the KJ. So these guys are all the Vs. Uh, so that uh, T minus lambda I M is zero for some M, uh, lambda J for some M. Okay. You fix the eigenvalue like two. And my question is, I'm gonna be a little bit more. Let me answer. So let's take a, let's take an example. So this uh, matrix over here has only one item pair, so it's not diagonalizable. Okay. Uh, but let me do this carefully. So you find the polynomial. So what's the polynomial of A? What? One minus lambda squared. Isn't it just this? But you didn't say two lambda. That's oh. all. Oh, 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 I see, I see. Just give me to the lambda. Okay, never mind. Okay, we're all in the same page. Yeah. Uh, so uh, multiplicity is two, but uh, uh, this guy is one. So two is less than one. So, uh, yeah. but you can find the journal as eigenvector. So, uh, yeah, let me do it. So, a minus i squared, uh, this is a zero, one, zero, zero squared. And what do you get? Huh? So, you get the zero matrix, right? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, I just want to make sure everybody's happy. Uh, so you get the zero matrix, and uh, yeah, yeah, okay. So yeah, that's one. So yes, so I wanted to right. Uh, I'm gonna just give me a second. Yes, okay, right. So uh, so zero one is in the generalized eigenvector uh, with eigenvalue uh, zero, okay? Because, because, no, no, with one, sorry. Okay, let me explain why. Because you just showed that A minus I squared zero one is zero. But that's exactly the definition of this guy. It's k uh, one a 
are all going to be so that a minus one pi j b is zero. Pull it down if you. No, I know, but like that j. Oh, oh, oh no, that's my no no lambda with lambda is one. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So here the uh, let me say m because there's too many j's here. So the 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 power that you needed the p of the leg was two, and so yeah. Zero one is in the generalized eigenvector for uh, k. All right, yeah, it's a generalized eigenvector. The map is nilpotent. Yeah, okay. So, what's the nilpotent degree for a minus i? Huh? Yeah, it's two because uh, what happens? You have all this guy s. Uh, and then s of one is not zero, it's the uh, zero, one, zero. But then s squared is the zero one, zero, 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 zero. So degree is uh, two. Um, so uh, the answer to the original question is that, uh, that I will prove, I mean, this is not obvious, that for every map, the, the maximal uh, the potency degree, so uh, would be at most the dimension of the space. So here the space was uh, uh, R2. It just happened that it matched, but in general, you are uh, at most the dimension. Of... Well, I'll prove that it's not obvious. Huh? Is it obvious? Why not? Why can I not write uh, a to the three? I can still complete that. Yeah, that's basically the argument. Yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah, that's basically the argument. You just look at the columns and uh, eventually it becomes trivial. Yeah. Meaning trivial, like you contain the whole space. Yeah, we'll, yeah, yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it. Uh, okay, any questions? So, uh, anything else I want to say? Yeah, so we said the degree. Uh, let's do another example, more important, just to think we're talking about it. Um, so, can somebody quickly tell me what's the degree of this guy? It, uh, even from Zoom people, do Zoom people know what's the degree of this uh, map? I promise I'll check the chat. I'll check. I stare at the chat. Wait. Oh, yeah, they can't hear you. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> Zoom people? What do you think is the degree of uh, the potency for this guy? So t to what power? Uh, becomes the zero map. Yeah, perfect. So indeed, if you act with X, Y, Z, and then the first guy gives you uh, Z, zero, 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 then when you act again, you kill the first coordinate. So uh, it's zero, zero, zero. And uh, uh, yeah, can Zoom people again tell me? And yeah, they can hear you. So, you can. Uh, so what is the degree here for the derivative? Okay, yeah, decide, what is it? And then Zoom people. Oh, yeah. So why is it n? Huh? Is it n? Okay, let me check. So uh, you take in, uh, let me just take the worst case. Okay, let me just do it. So uh, 
when you take yeah exactly so when i take derivative of this i get n factorial right times one then you have to do it once more to get a zero so the degree will be n plus one so you do it dn plus times to get this and then you do once more to get zero which is the dimension of which batch is exactly what we're going to prove that uh, you can at most be the yeah you do need to know even for the web work uh, I mean, at least know it for uh, for like uh, you know P two or P one. It's like a three by three, two by two. Uh, I mean, you have to know the method, obviously. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, good. Yes. All right. Um, so we talked about that. Oh, what about this guy? Can you tell me the the potency degree for this? Does it have an importance? So, what is the definition of the importance? Yeah, enough times, not enough times to infinity. Yeah. So, 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 uh, so if there was one, right? Let me put M. Then, right. So then, let's say this was uh, X K. Uh, what is it? You get like I'm overkilling it right now. Uh, let me make it simpler. What should I say? Yeah, yeah. So if 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 uh, M was the nil potency. Uh, uh, meaning that dm of p is zero. Uh, just take, um, just take one more. So take x to the m plus one. Uh, m. Uh, oh yeah, even uh, yeah yeah yeah. So if you do this m times, you get uh, m factorial, which is not zero, but xm is in the uh, here. So, so, so no. So it's not very important. Okay? So the dimension matters. Yeah, perfect. All right. Um, yeah, so let's prove this result. I think this is the one. Let's see. Uh, so you fix your linear map, and this is the dimension. And we can prove. The following three parts, but the last one is interesting. So first of all, this is from your homework. Yeah, the, the kernels increase. Uh, I don't know if that was in your homework, but we'll prove it. That if you can find one where they equal, then uh, all the following one, following ones are also equal. Was that in the homework? Okay. Oh, I see. And then uh, finally, uh, the one we care about, namely that the moment you hit the dimension of the space, uh, yeah, they're all equal. Does it? That the what? Oh, yeah, yeah, that will be the argument. We'll do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly it. Yeah, there will be no contradiction. Okay, so let's uh, let's work through this. Right. So, first, I have to prove the thing from the homework. Uh, or do I just say, oh, yeah, so the, the way you did it in the homework was. Uh, so basically, I'm talking about I'm talking about the uh, the chain of kernels, 
of powers. Um, and the way you prove it, uh, that kernel of TK is inside kernel of TK plus one, is what? You, uh, you have to show that every element in here is in here. So take a V that is in the kernel of TK and then act with uh, the, the T, okay? So, so you just have to show that TK plus one, V is zero. Yeah, that's what you have to show. So you write it like this. But then this guy is in the kernel, uh, which is zero. Yeah, very good. Um, the second one is the statement that the moment you so-called uh, reach the, the rig wall, the ceiling, then they're equal forever. <laughs> and we're going to use this to prove three, which is the interesting one. Yeah, so you already have chain from part one. So you want to show the reverse. That will show, uh, if, so we're assuming, okay, let me just write here. We're assuming that kernel of TM is equal to kernel of TM plus one. This is the assumption, okay? Want to show uh, this, because if you show this for every K, it will show that uh, they're equal. Yeah. Yeah, we have it for K equals zero. Uh, we want to show it for every K bigger than one. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. So uh, you take V and the um, K plus one, and you want to show that it belongs to, uh, to this guy. Uh, that's the definition. So uh, it's kind of weird, right? So it says, by doing this rearranging, it says that this guy, is in the kernel of that guy, right? Uh, but then we have this by assumption. So, so, but since it's in here, I will write it again in slides. It means that this guy is zero, which means that V is in the kernel of who? Yeah, yeah, in the kernel of TM plus K. So we show that going from V in this, you're in here, which is the inclusion we want. Is that okay? Too many circles. Looks like a component. Uh, yeah, so I need a parenthesis here. Right so we have that. So yeah, the way you finish from here is, we just show that V in this kernel uh, implies uh, V in the kernel of TM plus K, which is exactly this thing. Okay, all right? So they're all equal. Any questions? I wanna ask you questions, I'm too tired. All right, it's boring, like I wanna hear uh, like, um, so we want to prove that kernel of Tn is equal to kernel of Tn plus one. So as Arnold said, we have to do this by Arnold, right? Was it Arnold? No, can you remember the first name? Huh? Oh, Bart, who was the first name? Oh, I know. Yes, I know. Um, we want to show this, where Dean where n is d and b. And uh, so like Parth said, assume this by contradiction that they're not equal. Right. Then as you did in your homework, well, actually I can ask you, can someone tell me why this implies uh, this? I don't know if you can see it. A little bit tricky. Yeah, every the answer is on the slide, so it is not some material. Uh, it's just a logical. No, how does your brain work? 
Even Zoom people, if you can tell me if it's easy. This is plan. Wow. Okay, let me say why. Suppose uh, that there was some pair, uh, like this guy, doesn't matter, some kernel of Ti equal to kernel of Ti plus one. Then from part, uh, from this part, we show that kernel of Ti plus K is equal to kernel of Ti K plus K plus one. But that will imply that these two are equal. But we assume that they're not. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get to it, but at least that's the. Is it okay? No, no, no. I'm saying that you see, uh, if you. My question. I'm trying to do this proof step by step. So my question was, why does this imply this? And by this, I mean that there's strict inclusions. That was my question. And I'm saying that if you do not have strict inclusion, then you get this by part two, which will imply that this guy is equal. So they have to be strict inclusions. And then uh, we're like one step away to get the contribution. So let's get the contribution. So, uh, right. So, yeah. So now we have to do our counting again. So, uh, can somebody tell me? Uh, can somebody even the, if you know some people? Can somebody tell me why this is a contradictory statement? Since since uh, dim v is n. The, the what? No, that was that. Wait, wait, what are you saying? No, but here we assumed that kernel of TM was kernel of TM plus one. No, we don't have the same assumption. Huh? Yeah, I don't. The, the, we're, what we're, uh, just to let me make sure we're on the same page. Uh, uh, I'm proving that when n is the dimension, it forces it to be equal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's all. Yeah, it's not that more complicated. So, uh, Let's do it. So, uh, what do we have? We have n, we have kernel of t0 all the way to kernel of tn plus one. And uh, this guy is empty, so I might as well start from uh, t1. So, uh, we have one, two, three, blah, blah, blah. you have n plus one element, okay? But they're all strict subsets. So let me do it a little bit more slowly. So since dim of kernel uh, ti plus one is strictly bigger than dim kernel of ti, uh, there exists an xi plus one uh, uh, not in kernel of ti, but it is, let me say it a different way, in the kernel of ti plus one, but not in the kernel of ti, yeah? But this is a, it gives you a one dimensional thing. Okay, so then you group all this together. So you have B of X1 to uh, XN plus one. 
And these are all legally independent. Yeah, so um, is there another way to do it? Um, maybe there's a dimension argument that is quicker. So uh, let's see. So, okay, from here the contradiction is that this is bigger than n, which is dim p, but this is supposed to be less than dim b. So that's the contradiction. Um, what's a quicker way to do this? I want to start from, let's see. If some people know a quicker way, I'm, I'm happy to hear it. Uh, so kernel of tn plus one. Yeah, you know what? I think you, you have it. Uh, so this is bigger than at least dim of kernel tn, which is bigger than two times kernel, you know, of uh, tn minus one. Which is bigger than n plus one, but this guy is less than n. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's a sub. Yeah, I like this book. Forget my. Forget this is no. This is way more beautiful. I like this. This is a one liner. So you just write like this, and you get the contradiction. Is that okay, Zoom people? Yeah. So I like this. Good argument. All right. So that shows the importance, I think. Right? So well, let's apply it and we'll see now. Um, yeah, so it's not obvious that this generalized eigenspace, you know, let me remind you that said for every uh, V, there's some J, so that this guy is zero. Right? That's the general aspect. But it doesn't, it's not obvious that this is a subspace that is closed under addition as you take all these powers. It's not, it's not obvious. So let's prove that. Um, wait, am I concluding this? Okay, yeah, let's prove it. So, um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me ask you this. Why, if we prove this uh, statement with the power, uh, why are we done? Uh, even Zoom people, can you tell me why if we prove the first part implies that the uh, generalized eigenspace space is a subspace? How does this imply this? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What? Oh, yeah. What? Go ahead. Yeah, I'm asking why if you prove this, then you get this. Yeah, you know, it's the answer is easy. It's not um, tricky. Kernel of a linear map. Yeah, so uh, S equal to T minus lambda I D B, did some people say, uh, is linear. Okay? And uh, we proved that the kernels of linear maps are uh, are subspaces. Yeah, no, no, we use linear. It's not true for every for every map. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not assumed, of course, but uh, but uh, I don't know. I can't think of it. Usually we do that work, and there's a safe on class. Yeah, 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 but we have somebody has to do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, somebody has to do the work. Uh, anyway, so if we prove this, we get subspace. And uh, let's do it. So we have to show the first inclusion. And yeah, I want to ask you so, what J should we pick to get the first inclusion? Zoom people, what do you think? What should J be to get this? So let me remind you, this was all the V's so that T minus lambda I J V is uh, zero for some J. What should my J be to get the first inclusion? What do you think? Goes both ways. We don't want to prove uh, this. Oh. 
Zoom people. Where are they? Uh, zoom. Yes. So if you just take J to be D and B, uh, you get this. Because what is that? These are all the V's. So that T minus lambda I D and B uh, is zero. So just take J to be D and B. Because, uh, for example, T minus lambda I V is in here. I mean, we can approve this now. I mean, I don't know what the question is. But we can approve that thing. I mean, okay. Well, that's what it says, right? All right, now let's do the second part. And what was my question? I say I take V in here, I have to show V in the other one. Um, oh yeah, that's definition, yes. And then, right. Right, so this is the, the thing from the homework where you show that call this guy S. So if V is in kernel of SJ, then uh, V is in the kernel of, uh, uh, you know, anything after that. So, because J uh, is being less than DV. So, I mean, there's a little bit of, I think I mentioned this here, because this is a tricky part. Hopefully I say it here. Yeah, so how do you know exactly? So, it, there's two cases, right? Uh, if J is less than DV, then you get the kernel of uh, T minus lambda I J uh, is inside kernel of T minus lambda I D and V, right? That's homework. That's just the homework. But what if J is bigger than uh, D and V? Then you cannot use the homework because, because they're not, the homework says kernel of T I inside kernel of T I plus one. But here I'm saying, what if J is D and V plus two, or plus one? I'm saying here, here, it says for some J bigger than one. It doesn't say J has to be less than D and V, okay? So my question is, uh, can we have kernel of T minus lambda I, uh, uh, D and V, let me say it, how else do I say it? Oh, I know how to say it. T minus lambda I, D and V plus one, V to be zero, but not uh, T minus lambda I, uh, D and V to, v to be zero. So, so you have one guy is zero, but not uh, the other one. Wait, what am I? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's where. Yes, okay. So, why is that not possible? Yeah, Zoom people, wait. Uh, zoom people, why we cannot have uh, the following statement that uh, the dimension of a kernel of T minus lambda i dim v is a strict subset of dim kernel. I'm kind of this dim. I want to write like I want to write like absolute value. Ding 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 ding. Something like things now. Like kernel of T minus lambda i, uh, dim v plus one. Why I'm not allowed to have this? Zoom people. Do the zoom people know? No, no, no. You see, you make the same mistake. Zoom people? Yeah, you gave the argument, so I don't know why you get confused there. Uh, so we, uh, where is it? Yeah, so we proved that the moment you hit the dimension, 
That's the only assumption. Then they're all equal. One assumption, one of the end, this is for n is din b. Okay, if you don't like this, call it uh, din b is, or n is din b. Okay, is that okay? And your, with your argument, again, the argument was that the kernel of tn plus one will be strictly bigger than n uh, kernel tn and blah, 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 you will get the contradiction of n plus one. If that was the case. So we're not using anything else, just this quick argument. All right, so that's why uh, in this proof, uh, so let me go over here. So when we say uh, j bigger or equal than one, we're actually saying j in one thing b. Uh, we're not allowing j to be bigger, so then we can just use the homework result. All right. Now let's do some examples of eigenspaces. So this is from Axel. You can read this as well. Uh, take this map, and this map, uh, I think I find, yeah, first we have to find eigenbounds. There's j equal one. So you have this equation, and you want to find the lambda. And I claim that lambda is zero and five. Can you? Possibly see that? Is it obvious? Is it not obvious? And you know what? I'll just solve. So 4y is lambda x, um, 0 is lambda y, and 5z is lambda z. This is your system. And it gives you that what is x, what is y, and then what is z. So what is x right away? If, uh, if lambda is not zero. If lambda is not zero, what is x? Huh? If x, if lambda is not zero, what is, let me start from here. Yeah. And then uh, z would be, uh, z would be, what is z? Yeah, z can be anything. So, so, now, since lambda is not zero, we get 5z equal to uh, lambda z. So we get that lambda is forced to be five and z can be any number. So, okay. And that means you have E5 is the span of who? Yeah. And then uh, E0, if you put uh, lambda equal zero, um, uh, this is so put uh, lambda equal zero. Yeah, so um, y can be anything, and then well, okay, yeah. I mean, depending on what you like, yeah. We can start from x being anything. That means y is. Um, uh, y is zero, and then uh, uh, z, and then uh, yeah, five z is zero, so it's zero. So then, what is the span of e zero? Okay, zoom people. So this is e five. This is e zero. Is t diagonalizable? How would you uh, zoom people? Is it diagonalizable? Yes, no. Yeah, yeah, it's not. And uh, 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 and instead of killing yourself with algebraic multiplicities, uh, oh, just use the uh, the spectral theorem. The spectral theorem says that it has to equal to the direct sums of eigenspaces. 
and then uh, this is not true. You have R three uh, is a strict the you have strict containment of E zero and uh, E five. Okay, so all the best. Good luck. Is there more questions? No, I had office hours yesterday. Well, I can have more. I don't know. Okay. 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 I hope we will start having questions. Sorry, wait, wait, what? Like with the, not with the, 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 with